Hey everybody, Jeff here. So we're in part three of my Capture One Pro sort of beginner training here. Um, this is just kind of with the idea of if you're brand new to the program and, and you're exploring it, uh, how to feel more confident diving in with it here and, and uh, not feeling bogged down by the interface or any of the other parameters of it. Um, I think it's it's a pretty easy program once you understand kind of where your files are living and, and how to work with the files, how to get them in, how to get them out, basically. So in the first video, we looked at that. We looked at importing, we looked at a little bit of the interface, how the file folder structure works. If you uh, haven't seen that video, please check it out up here. Um, and in the second part, we looked at uh, tethering your camera to the program and working with that sort of system, uh, that sort of workflow. We looked at uh, tagging and rating and how you can set up some of this virtual organization a little bit, uh, you know, sort of diving in a little bit to the virtual organization as well as a little bit of the disk level, how you can move a file from your capture folder into the selects folder and it actually moves it on disk into another folder. And then we looked at exporting a JPEG just for like a square for Instagram. Um, and so in this video, what we're gonna look at is we're going to look at taking a file from Capture One out to Photoshop, doing a retouch on it, and then sending it from Photoshop back to Capture One. Um, some of the, the, the workarounds that we ha have to do with Lightroom with that have for a long time been kind of a bear. Um, not super fun and the decisions we have to make with Lightroom and, uh, you know, with the hope that, uh, of course, that they will be making those changes. Ironically, Capture One hasn't had those problems. Uh, it works really well with being able to work with a layered Photoshop file and make additional edits to it, take it back to Photoshop back and forth a number of times. So we'll look at that. We'll look a little bit more at uh, how the virtual organization is set up here and different ways you can work with it. And we'll look at exporting a larger file out of here with the intentions of going to print with it and some of the parameters we'd want to look to for that. So let's dive in. So if I look here at this image here, which is of this uh, Belgian ale, the first thing I want to do is, is let's take a look at just a, you know, like a little bit of a quick edit that we can do to, to it. Uh, the first thing that I want to see is I want to see, well, is it straight up and down? So I'm going to come here to my grid menu and I'm going to choose show to just kind of eyeball it and see like, is this thing really straight up and down? Now, another thing that we have available to us in the program are guides. We can actually move guides around. Now, right now, I don't have any guides available to me. I have my grid up here I can activate, but no guides. And so I can add and subtract certain items from this top toolbar here. And to do that, I can right click in this area Control-click or right-click and choose Customize Toolbar. And it brings up this item here, which allows me to choose some other items that I might actually want up here. So I'm going to cruise this list, and I'm going to look for my guides. Here they are. So I'm going to grab the guides, and I'm going to drag them up here next to my grid. The guides will allow me, now that I activate them and I get myself onto this selection tool, this arrow, it allows me to move my guides left and right on this particular item. So I can look at the right-hand side of it, and I can look at the left-hand side, and I can determine, like, is this thing standing upright? There's something about it to me that seems like it's leaning just ever so slightly to the right. It could be some keystoning of the product itself. Um, but if I wanted to rotate this, I could come to my rotation and flip, and I could, it pulls up this grid and it gives me the ability to give it just a little wee bit of rotation something like that and i can there's a little the little undo sort of like curvy arrow if i hold the option or alt on the pc and toggle that it shows me before after i think that did some good things it feels a little better to me it feels a little more upright you know maybe it's a little too much and so i can highlight this number and i can use my arrows left and like, up and down to determine you know more or less rotation so it's really just a slight amount of rotation i think the point five six or whatever i had it on there was a little too much so i'm just going to back that off it was really just needing a little bit that i could see as it's rotating it's of course cropping ever so gently from the outside edge to account for that something to just be aware of you can see if i option click my undo here before 
after. So there's a little bit of a, if I were to really twist it around, it would start to have to really crop into it to have the same aspect ratio. All right, so I've rotated the item a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of work here in terms of, I think the color looks pretty good, um, but in terms of just exposure, I'm gonna brighten it up just a hair, pop my contrast a little bit more here, pump up the saturation a bit, um, and maybe I wanna look at like my shadows, maybe I want the, the label to be just a little bit brighter there. That looks pretty good there. All right, and now I decide, well, it's got like this card in there. There's like this little piece of lighting tool that's off to the right, and I wanna get rid of that here. And you know, the Capture One Pro has a spot removal function, which is really more for dust spots. Um, those kinds of spots. It's not a cloning type of tool or anything like that. So we're going to take this thing to Photoshop. To do this, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to choose up here, Edit With Adobe Photoshop 2020. And it's actually going to have to process out a file to work with. And and then when I'm done and I save that file, it's gonna load that file back into my capture folder and show up here in Capture One for me. Something important to remember. So I'm actually processing this out so that Photoshop can work on it. I'm gonna, you could choose a TIFF or a PSD. I'll choose a PSD in this case, and I'll go for 16 bits, Adobe 98. That'll match the color space I have over in Photoshop, 300 pixels. I'm gonna go fixed. I want the whole thing, 100%. And I'm gonna choose Edit Variants. It's gonna send this file out to Photoshop. So I'm gonna wait for Photoshop to, to load up and start sending the file out here. So my Photoshop opens up. I'm gonna just do a, a, a quick tweak here and get rid of my application frame and bring up my rulers and get myself looking like so. And let's go ahead and change my workspace to the photography workspace. And I know right off the bat, I, I just, I wanna get rid of that thing that's, that's off to the side. So I'm gonna need some sort of retouching layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command J, which is layer new, layer via copy. Uh, this will be my retouching layer, so I can name it to that, retouch. And I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do about just grabbing a regular lasso, circling this item with the lasso, and then I'm gonna bring up with shift to delete the, the fill dialog, and I'm gonna choose content aware. I'm just gonna see how content aware does on this. If it tries to bring in some of the bottle, or if it magically makes this thing disappear, which, not bad, right? Some funky bits down in here, but maybe since I did the heavy lifting, this would be a point at which I could bring my, get my clone stamp out and come in and take care of any of this sort of like horizontal info and a little bit of that shadow bits and see if I can then clone out some of that action like so. And that's looking pretty good. You know, in an ideal world, I would want to probably try to do this kind of work on a larger monitor. Um, some of these laptop screens can be hard for me to see. Um, something to consider. So I'm looking at this and I say, that's looking pretty good. I think I wanna put a crop on it um, because it's, I want it to be a little bit more centered here. So that's looking pretty good. I'll bring down from the top and maybe I'll bring up from the bottom a ways like so. And I'll go ahead and crop that file. And so now I've got that card out of the way. I've put a nice little crop on it. Um, it's looking pretty good. Of course, I could take it further. I could do a lot more work with this in Photoshop, but I wanna get this file now back into Capture One. I'm gonna hit Command Save. And I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of Photoshop. And you'll see now back in my browser, not only do I have the original cap, the, the raw file here, but if I look just below it, it has brought this PSD with it. So then I have it back in Capture One and I decide along the way, you know, I think I want, I'm now on the PSD. Notice that the raw file has all of the different exposure work that I might've been doing on the photo, but the PSD does not. It's because we exported that out. It, it baked it into that raw file out as a PSD. And we're sort of like working with a new image at that point in Photoshop where it's not gonna like, when we bring it back in, we're bringing back a PSD. We're not bringing back a raw file. Now, if I wanted to do anything more to this, like I decided, oh, I think I want a little bit, you know, more of the shadows to be filled, let's say, 
So as I tweak that and just open my shadows up a bit more and I decide, yeah, that, that's looking good. I've done this to the PSD. And then I decide, well, actually I want to print this thing and I think I'm going to print it out of Photoshop. Well, then I'm going to have to take it back to Photoshop. And so I can come back here and I can hit the right click or the control on the Mac, control click, and it brings up my menu of items here. And at this point, I'm going to choose not edit with, because what that's going to do is it's going to create another copy of it to edit with. All I want to do is open it up from this current state back into Photoshop. So I choose open with Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop opens back up. There it is. And you'll see the beauty of this is that it's saved that last step that I did of just opening the shadows up a bit from Capture One, but it's also brought it back open with my retouching, my original retouching layer, which was getting rid of that card. So from here, I could go to my print dialog, I could print this file out off my inkjet printer if I wanted, and I'm good to go. So there's a little bit more flexibility, I think, with Capture One and working with Photoshop than has been for a long time with Lightroom and, and you know, Suffice to say, software companies like to kind of chase each other around, so that I'm sure that'll be a thing that Lightroom will employ in the near future, if they have not done already. Now, in this next part here, I'm going to show that there are times when we need to apply certain settings from one image to another similar image. And I'll use this sort of like little gnome house here shot as an example, sort of like product shot for some sort of catalog. And in this case, there is um, a, a little bit of a cool color cast to the shot. And photographers can use gray cards um, or these color checker cards to help them in this process. There's a whole other set of work that we can do in terms of camera calibration with these sort of color checker cards. But if we're using it just as a white balance target, what I can do is I can identify the, you know, these, these patches down here. And I'm going to go to my white balance menu item here. I'll just close these other ones down just for ease of seeing this here. And I'm going to come here to this eyedropper and I'm going to bring the eyedropper in. I can come to this gray swatch. I could do this on the white as well, but I'll come to this gray swatch and I'm going to click once. And when I do this, watch my Kelvin on the left here, the Kelvin and tint sliders change. So I click and it changes and it white balances, the custom white balance this shot. But what I need to do now is I need to pick up this new custom white balance and I need to apply it to this file over here of the no mouse, right? So I've made the change here to this one. What I need to do, there's a couple different ways I can do this actually. You'll see in the upper right, there's this option here called copy apply. I can choose copy and notice it makes the apply, the down arrow light up. And when I come over here to the gnome house, I can now choose apply and it warms up that shot. It applies the Kelvin and tint settings from that previous shot to this one, right? Now, the other way to do that is, he, I'm gonna undo that. So here we're back at our baseline 4990, and this one has the change, 5485 color. And I want to apply this color to this shot. So if I hold the command key or control on the PC, and I choose the other file, and I have my, my white balance card, the color checker here, super selected. I'm looking to pick this white balance up and apply it to everything else that is not super selected, but also selected. In this case, you can see my hero gnome house is selected. It's not the super selected one. It doesn't have the white border around it, but it, it's selected. It's got a white border around it. And what I'm going to do is if you look over here at the white balance window, Next to our undo arrow, there's this like a double arrow going on, not too dissimilar from our copy apply arrows up in the upper right here. And what that allows me to do is to, to immediately lift up the settings from the super selected file and apply it to all other ones that I have selected. To do this, I hold the shift key. So I hold the shift key and, cl and click this copy, apply, and it does it in one click. It copies it and applies it to the file that is not super selected. And I'll do it again just so you can watch. Watch the gnome house, see it's kind of cool toned. Now I'm gonna hold shift and click, watch the gnome house get warmer. And now you can see the, that that is picked up that white balance, that custom target and applied it to that other house. So for example, if I decided with Benny here, here's Benny. I'll take the crop off Benny just for right now. 
and we'll decide that we want Benny to, we want some of the black and white from Benny to be applied to this portrait. Maybe we decide we want this one to be black and white too. We like its parameters. We could certainly do that. We could super select Benny in black and white. I can hold the command, control on the PC key, and select, a sub-select. It's uh, selected along with it. Benny's super selected. I can then come over to my little um, three color wheel icon here, the color window, and you'll see that I've enabled black and white on Benny. I can hold the shift key and hit this double arrow, and it picks up that black and white parameter and applies it to the portrait here. So these are ways that we can pick up the parameters of these different windows and immediately apply them to other images that are sub-selected in our browser. Now let's say I'm not going to do any Photoshop work, uh, but I want to get you know, I've been asked for the file in a, in a high resolution, a print resolution. So let's say we have Benny here, and I'm going to put a crop on him. They want something that's of an 8 by 10 shape. So I'm going to put this 4 by 5 aspect ratio on him, like so. Okay. And crop it down a bit. It's looking good. 8 by 10 Benny. And I'm going to come up here to my recipe here, so the process recipes. And I'm going to say, okay, we need a bigger file. We look and, they, and it says, okay, we want a TIFF. Well, there's one that's set up here. So we're going to enable it by hitting the check mark. We're targeting it so that we can see the parameters, but we want to make sure we enable it so that when we hit process, that's the one that actually processes. Now, for point of reference, if I'm enabled on Instagram Square here, but I'm targeted on TIFF Adobe RGB and I hit process, it's going to process this out under the Instagram Square process recipe because that's the one that's actually enabled with the check mark. So I want to make sure that if I want a higher res, I need to actually set that by hitting the check mark, enabling that particular recipe to work. So in this case, if we're going to send out a TIFF, an 8-bit TIFF, Adobe 98, you could be working with Profoto RGB, that's fine. And we're going to say 300 pixels per inch um, because that is the, 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 the calculator that's going to allow for um, this particular aspect ratio to print out at the exact size that we need. So we need to say, well, what is that exact size? So we're going to come in here and we're going to say, well, we need the width and height in there. We're going to go inches. And we're going to say 8 by 10. And you'll notice down here in my process summary that it says, okay, it's going to pump out an 8 by 10. That's the 4 by 5 aspect ratio that I created. And it's now saying, okay, well, at 300 pixels per inch, it's now doing the math to calculate. That's a 3,000 pixel on the tall edge, 2,400 pixels on the, the wide edge, um, scaling of 67% down from this particular resolution of a file. And it's going to pump out a 21 megabyte 8-bit TIFF, which would be plenty fine for an 8x10. And then when I come up here to hit Process, like so, you'll see that it processes out the file. I can go back to my Session folder. I can go to my output, and here is that Benny TIFF sized 8x10 print size. So if I were to print that file on an 8x10 piece of paper, it would be exactly 8 inches by 10 inches. So this was part three to my series of sort of beginner level Capture One Pro, kind of getting, getting your feet wet with it and understanding how the program works and how to get images in, how to edit them, how to get them out. We're going to keep diving deeper. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, you know what to do. Throw some comments down in the comments down there. We'll get back to you. Uh, thanks to Canon for providing some of the equipment to make these videos possible. Thanks for watching.